Lord be with you. Welcome home to St. Mark's on this first Sunday of Advent. Because Advent is a penitential time. We're preparing for the celebration of uh, Christmas time. But we're also underneath that preparing for that final time when Jesus comes back and judges us all. So we have that twin theme and we begin with confession. Would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive our forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, my brothers and my sisters, your sins are entirely forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. And in response, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility that at the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And please be seated. Well, before we hear the word of God, if the kids that are going down to godly play, come on up. We've got a little work to do, and then I'll give you a blessing. And away you go, downstairs. 
with some people who are going to be very helpful. <laughs> okay, this. There's a big circle here, right? And it has all of these shapes here, and they are representing each Sunday of the church year. You know, the church has its own year, you know, like we have January, February, March. Okay, well, the church year has, has Advent to start it, then Christmas, then Epiphany, and so on. And it's a circle, and this is how we remember in this church. So, notice the color. Notice what I'm wearing. Close, right? Notice what's here, 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 here. It's all that sort of blue, dark blue color. That lets us know we're in the season of Advent. So, who would like to be the person that moves the dial from here to here? First hand up. Go for it. There we are. That's representing the first Sunday of Advent. And we have six more to go before we get to Christmas. There's the sign for Christmas. Yeah. You want to do it too, don't you? <laughs> okay. That's okay. Yeah. All right. We're moving ahead. That's perfectly all right. Yeah. Now, that being done, there behind you is Dr. Angela. And Angela is going to go downstairs with you guys and you're going to it's a godly play session right yeah now if you haven't done godly play you're going to love it all the adults say i wish godly play were around when i was in sunday school so have a good time with with angela all right but as you go let's have a prayer all right come on we join hands here for prayer yeah okay the lord be with you and also with you. Right. Let us pray. Jesus, you said that the kingdom of God is children. Look at the children. So that's what we do. We look at the children, Lord, and we know you will give them a special blessing as they're downstairs, and that you will give us a special blessing at this baptismal Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, very, very much. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. And I'll, good. Okay. Now have a good time down there. And you can come back up and see the baptism. All right? Okay. You want to lead the mansion? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are you seeing things there? Yeah. Is she going to go down or is she going to help me with the... Okay. Fair enough. That's okay. You can help me work. Yeah. Well, help Diane work. Okay. Before we hear the word of God, let's ask for a blessing and we'll say it together. Blessed Lord, you have caused the holy scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that comforted by your promises we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life which you have given us in Christ Jesus our Savior and Lord. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Now let's listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Malachi, a healing on the day of judgment. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And in response from Psalm 98, in righteousness, the Lord will judge the earth. In righteousness will the Lord judge the earth. Join me. 
In righteousness shall the Lord judge the earth. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things with his right hand and his holy arm. He has won for himself the victory. In righteousness will the Lord judge the earth. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. In righteousness will the Lord judge the earth. Shout with joy to the Lord, all ye lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Oh, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. In righteousness will the Lord judge the earth. Let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. In righteousness will the Lord judge the earth. A reading from 2 Thessalonians, work even to the last day. Paul writes to members of the church at Thessalonica who thought the return of Jesus would happen very soon. We were not idle when we were with you and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you this was in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Mm -hmm. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's stand and greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stand up and raise your hands because your redemption is drawing near. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, Look at all this. The days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. Everything will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, Will, will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you're not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Don't go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, don't be terrified. These things must take place first but the end won't follow immediately. 
Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and sisters, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You'll be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of our one, true, holy, and living Lord, everybody say, Amen, and please be seated. Advent, of course, is the traditional preparation time for the celebration of Christmas. But what's hidden behind that is what not too many churches like ours anyway emphasize. And we have been doing that in this parish for a very long time. We are emphasizing that subtext, which is the second coming of Christ. And that second coming, we Christians understand, will be the end of this world as we know it, the beginning of God's full kingdom, the next world. But it will also be a time of judgment. We will be held accountable. Now for Christians, baptized Christians, that should be no problem. We heard about it in the first lesson. What is that? Quote, I want to do it exactly. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. With healing in his wings. That puts all of this in context. Because judgment? Who likes to be judged? Who wants to be held accountable? We can always find ways to slither out of that. But here we are, no, acknowledging our tradition that the world will end, and it will end in a time of judgment for all of us. But I'm saying to you, that should be nothing to fear, nothing at all. And what the earliest Christians understood more than anything else was when they were baptized, as we're going to baptize these two little kids, they were protected. They were in Christ. So how could anything terrible happen to them? How could they even do anything awful if they were in Christ? Now, this in Christ... You'll notice in the baptism we make a big, big thing of that. We are setting apart these two little kids to be God's own. And that will involve them in an extraordinary life. That's the exciting part of all this. That, yeah, saved at the last day, but that's all rather abstract. The real thing is that they are going to be in Christ, and Christ lives for the world now. And you'll hear it in the baptismal words. Christ lives for now. And you might have noticed in that second reading, that might have seemed odd to you if you're not a, you know, a student of the Bible, what Paul is 
working against is the notion that when you are baptized, everything will be just fine. You can do anything because you're saved. In Paul's day, they thought the end of the world was imminent. It was going to happen in their lifetimes. So some of them got really lazy. They really did. They didn't want to do anything. They wanted to just have a good time until God came back in the form of Jesus. And Paul's saying, no, 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 no. We don't know when he's going to come back, so get to work. Get busy. And that's a good counsel for some people. Maybe not for too many people now, but it is good counsel. We are being asked to do everything we can to bring the kingdom in here and now as much as we can in this fallen world and as much as we can as fallen people. Well, our two baptisms, little babies, they won't know until they begin to grow up and they see that being a Christian is a very vital thing. It is a world of courage and satisfaction because we are bringing in the kingdom, my brothers and sisters, even now. We are partners with God bringing in the kingdom. So, here we go. We're going to go back to the font, and our font here at St. Mark's is at the beginning of our journey through the church. So the first thing you see when you walk in is that font. That's to remind us that we are consecrated God's own in our baptisms. It's a very powerful thing. It's just as important as this altar. Just as important. So we make a big deal of it here, and you're going to be part of that. We're going to walk back there, Diane and I, and then the families are going to gather around as best they can. It'll be a big crowd, but that's fine too. And we will have prayers, baptize, and we will also give the sign of the cross on the two baptizans' heads. They are sealed by Christ for the rest of their lives in this world and into eternity. As we prepare, let's sing. You see it in your, um, I guess it would be the green books, right? Pardon? Blue. It's the blue ones. Okay. So let's stand and sing and we'll move to the font. <laughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, Word of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my song, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. So the kids are coming up, but we'll get started because it's a lot of words. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we're reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith and in love and in obedience to the will of God. So I ask now, parents and sponsors, whom do you now present? We present Haley, we present Jack. We present Haley and Jack. Lovely. Called by Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have these children baptized into Christ? We do. In Christian love, you're presenting both these children for holy baptism. As you bring them to receive this gift, you promise faithfully to bring them to the services of God's house and teach them the Lord's Prayer the creeds, and the Ten Commandments. As they grow in years, you promise to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for their instruction in the Christian faith so that they may live a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ, trusting in God, proclaiming Christ through word and deed, caring for others in the world God made, and working for justice and peace. Now, having heard all that, do you promise to help Haley and Jack grow in the Christian faith and life? We do. Now, they can't do this by themselves, so I ask the congregation, the people of God, do you promise to support Haley and Jack, their sponsors and their families, and to pray for them in Haley and Jack's new life in Christ? We do. Now I ask us to profess our faith, all of us, in Christ Jesus. I ask us to reject sin, and I ask us to confess the faith of the church. Do we renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty works? I renounce them. Do we renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do we renounce the ways of sin that draw us from God? I renounce them. Those renunciations are very ancient. We don't even know, you know how old they are. But I keep telling the same story. In ancient days, the people who were baptized would spit at the devil before they made those renunciations. So, let's go on. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do we believe in God, the Holy Spirit? 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for Jack and Haley and their families, and for the church, those in need and all of God's creation. Deliver Jack and Haley, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth, and fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Send them into the world and witness to your love and bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, giver of all life, bless Jack's parents, Nick and Amanda, Haley's parents, Lacey and Jason, Jack's sponsors, Matthew and Alicia, Haley's sponsors, Amanda, Nick, Brett and Thea, and their whole families. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for Jack and Haley. Strengthen them in their own baptisms and renew their commitment to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Christ Jesus, you have joined earth and heaven. We thank you for the joy in our lives, and we ask that your healing power bring hope to the hopeless, healing to the sick, courage to the weak, and honor to those who suffer for righteousness' sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us grace to entrust all whom we remember this day to your never failing love for saints departed. We ask rest and eternal light perpetual. For saints still with us, we commend them to your mercy according to the favor you bear your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, now we come to the blessing of the water. And the kids, they, when it's, yeah, they're surrounded by adults, so come on around. Yeah, we're going to bless water. Yeah, so you can see this. Can you hold that, Diane, so I can see? <laughs> Guys. I can't pay attention. So this is going to be special water by the time I say all these fancy words, okay? It's called a blessing, and this water is going to be the special water we use to baptize the two babies, okay? Now, there's, there's a prayer that we start with. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks for in the beginning, Lord, your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood, you saved Noah and his family. You led our elder brothers and sisters in faith, the Hebrews, into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Jesus Christ has set us free from the bondage of sin and death and has opened the way to joy and freedom of everlasting life. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to put the water here. 
So water, remember, when you have a shower or a bath, makes you clean, right? So this is going to make these two little guys especially clean in God's eyes. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that they who are baptized may be given new life. Wash away their sin, bury the old life, Raise them from these waters, cleansed and fresh and new, brought forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Everybody agree. Amen. Now, baptism. Should we start with Haley? She's the littlest one, right? And then Jack will be next. All right. So here we go. Haley, Sue, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. You're like, you're like mass, don't you? Yeah. And of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Amen. All right. Now, here comes Jack. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Yeah. Think of this as bath time, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, I baptize you in the name of the Father. That's right. And of the Son. <laughs> yeah, you like that. And of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. So Haley Sue and Jack Nicholas are now baptized, and we have some more prayers to go. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your sons and daughters new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Now, if you guys could come, I'm going to give them a special... Blessing. All right, we've got one, we've got two, okay? All right. Now, here it is. Sustain these two, Haley and Jack, Lord Jesus, with your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the Spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever, everybody says, Amen. Now, I don't have the oil with me, but I'm going to take this specially blessed water, and I'm going to make the sign of the cross on Haley's forehead, and I'm going to say, Haley, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. I'll do exactly the same for Jack. Jack, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ and forever. Everybody say, Amen. Okay, now one more thing to do. You see these candles here? This is the Christ candle, this big candle. It's a very special candle. It reminds us of Christ's presence here. And we consecrated at the at Easter time. So we take the light from here, the light of Christ, and we give it to each of the kids. But since they're little guys, okay, Dad, hang on to it. And yeah, okay. This one is for Jack. There we are. Mom, hang on to it. Okay. Receive the light of Christ. Let your light so shine before the world that it may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is a special song we sing. You have put on Christ, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. You have put on Christ. 
Christ. In him you have been baptized. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us welcome the newly baptized, Haley and Jack. We welcome you into Christ's family. We receive you as fellow members of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not the first time you're going to get clapped for, guys, but good for you. Okay. Now, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And exchange the peace however you feel comfortable. <laughs> no baptism is complete without the Eucharist and gathering around the table to celebrate with the Lord. So that's what we'll do. And our understanding is that once you are baptized, you are absolutely welcome at the table. You always are anyway. But, you know, you are one of, of Christ's own. So we commune babies too. Whatever works for, for the parents, but they're fully a member of Christ now. So as we prepare the table, Hymn 25 in those green books, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers, and Let Your Light Appear. Old Lutheran Hymn. <laughs> Stand and sing it. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing. And darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray and watch and whistle. At midnight comes the cry. The watchers on the mountain. Bread, 
we have wine, we've given alms, now we celebrate. Blessed are you, O God of all creation. Everything in the universe is yours. Lord Jesus, thank you. I give you what you first gave me. I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you see. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind to think as you think. I give you my spirit so that you may pray in me. I give you my heart so that you may love in me. I give you myself so that you may grow in me. All things come of you, O Lord. And of your own do we give you. It's okay if they keep coming up. At some point I'll probably pick them up. <laughs> okay, now we bless the wine and the bread. Let us love one another that we may celebrate this holy mystery in peace. A blessing of peace, a sacrifice of praise. Holy things for holy people, thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. <clears throat> and if the kids would like, if any of the kids want to come up here, come on up. You want to bring them up so they can see what's going on better? You guys want to come up? Yeah. Want to be beside me? It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is a long prayer that says thank you to God. Do you ever say grace at home, like before a meal, a special meal? Do you do that? That's what this is. This is grace. Yeah. Okay. Holy God, holy and mighty, beginning and end, giver of life. Blessed are you for the creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's obedience to your will. Blessed are you for Christ Jesus, your very son, 
Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the recalling of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, full of grace and truth. We celebrate our new birth by our baptism into his death and resurrection. We look in hope to his coming again in power and great glory. Come, Lord Jesus, mighty God, bless this holy communion. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Stir us up to be worthy of our inheritance as children of God. Incarnate your word among us. Fill us with your light. Make us peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Have upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy My brothers and my sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should come in under, under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul will be healed. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, you guys probably have communion in the pew, right? You got some? Take, did you? So why don't you go back and take communion with your family? Okay? You've seen how this works. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, the body of Christ given for us. Amen. and the blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. May we take and eat these in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. When we get to heaven, I suspect if we're not careful, we'll think that it's full of people being very quiet. I'm not so sure. One of the joys is hearing children being children. And one of the joys for me in particular is coming to service and hearing the people of God greeting one another and enjoying one another. So when we get to heaven, I suspect that will be more the case. There will always be places for people who are quiet and saying their prayers, believe me. But there are also places for people like our children. As Jesus said, let the children come to me, such is the kingdom of heaven. Soul of Christ, sanctify us. Body of Christ, blood of Christ, Jesus my Savior, dwell in me. Please stand. And we'll pray. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen.
May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Now as we go out, let's sing, All Earth is Hopeful. The Savior comes at last. All earth is hopeful the Savior comes at last. Furrows lie open for God's creative task. This the labor of people who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell. A virgin mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived him, God, with us. Our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. This same Lord Jesus, the Lord's declared, almost here God is nearing in beauty and grace. Oh, near every gateway, in haste come out in haste. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live in our world. He is present in neighbors we see. Our Jesus is with us and everybody free. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm.